Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the demo uh, by Michael O'Rogan uh, in the, for the Falk uh, General Meeting today uh, on, in uh, May 10th, uh, 2021. Uh, what Michael O'Rogan, so, it, so we have a pleasure of having uh, a very uh, accomplished artist today. Uh, so Michael was in uh, Texas earlier, and he's, he's, he lives in uh, San Jose now. And uh, he graduated from uh, Brigham Young University. Uh, he studied art. In, uh, by career, he's an illustrator. Uh, and thank you, Michael, for serving uh, in uh, Vietnam uh, as a, in, uh, in the Marines. Um, thank you for your service. And uh, so Michael has worked in various magazines and uh, also in the agencies. And his works are available in uh, Gallery 24 in Los Gatos uh, now. Uh, today, Michael is going to show uh, the figurative art uh, using oil. And, uh, he, and also, he's going to show some of his uh, the, uh, the process of how he's developed the, the, uh, uh, different artworks. Uh, so he'll start with that. And he's going to show uh, the demo of one of the artworks uh, with the different faces of how he develops them. So it's, uh, so over to you, Michael. Uh, now I'll stop sharing. Great. Well, thank you for that short introduction. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, it's a real honor to be here and uh, give this demonstration. And I, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I, I hope that the, this time, and I know it's going to be short, and I hope this time is uh, wor worth your while. And I hope everybody can uh, take something away from this that will help them with uh, with pursuing your art. And, uh, you know, we, we live in such a great area because it's so culturally rich. And there's this there's this great backbeat of of art that goes on around us. And there's so many great, talented individuals around us. Uh, I, I feel like a minnow in a in a in a great big pool here. And I just want you to know that I, I don't have a lot of experience in this particular area that I'm working in right now. Uh, working in portraits, I uh, have kind of uh, gone into this direction because of a uh, passion for it. Uh, I seem to have an affinity for it for some reason. And, and uh, I, I, I've always loved to do figure drawing and, and and started doing watercolor and did a lot of watercolor portrait work uh, live from models before COVID and was working from models a lot. And then when COVID hit, uh, uh, got real isolated and started, uh, you know, working with uh, uh, reference material that I could find. And uh, I just started painting a lot of uh, uh, portraits from reference. And uh, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. I did, I did have the great opportunity to work with several different uh, really good painters. Uh, uh, of note, uh, Adrian Gottlieb, uh, a painter who, uh, out of LA who uh, uh, does, is, is a really good portrait painter, uh, has done, uh, you know, he, he paints like governor's portraits and stuff like that. I, did a workshop with him at uh, uh, Numu, uh, the the uh, museum there in in Los Gatos, and then also took a work uh, a class, uh, 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 a graduate level class with uh, uh, Zhao Ming Wu uh, at the uh, at the uh, academy. Uh, you know, so these you know I, I've been able to be around some people that have helped me a great deal. So. If I can pass on some of the stuff that they've they've given me tonight, then I guess I've done my job. So without delay, let's get into it. Let me show you a few of the pieces that, that I've, I've done. Uh, like I said, my experience isn't, isn't that deep in this area, but I sure have been having a good time, if, <laughs> if that counts for anything. So uh, That's the most important part. <laughs> That's what I think. So uh, let's see. Um, you want to 
to shift to the other camera there. Yeah. Okay. This is the. Uh, let me. I'm looking for the other one. Yeah. Oh. That, what's the name of the other camera? Is it? It starts with Ho. Or no, no. Wait, wait, where is it? Oh yeah, I see. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So. <clears throat> Got a split screen there. Oops, we got a little bit of a. Okay. Um, start out with this piece. One of the early little paintings. Uh, working on a panel here. Shubha, you can spotlight to the other camera. Yeah, let me uh, spot. I'll replace the other one. Give me a spotlight. There you go. I, yes, look at this one. I, I, I go to a, because I'm a veteran. I go to a vet center, and uh, uh, I know I, I get I get to meet a lot of the veterans there. And I was doing their portraits and uh, started taking their photos before the COVID hit, and. Then I, I took these uh, photos when I got home and I started doing these uh, oil paintings of them. And uh, I'm, I, I think I'm gonna do a, a presentation, maybe a book around uh, the end of the fall or maybe the first of next year of these guys, uh, maybe about 16 or so different portraits. These gentlemen. Surgeon's major. Very nice. I like the psychological uh, element that you can get with just turning a little bit of uh, the, a line, a 32nd of an inch here or there, and just all of a sudden you get a whole different expression. You would go wrong with a pretty girl, <laughs> unless you marry him. <laughs> and uh, Michael, what's the panel you have used? What's the uh, uh, is it? Uh, this, this is just a a um, masonite panel. I, I I really like working on these. Um, this panel that I bought from. Um, See this, this guy's name. This guy's down in LA called Art Flex. Mm -hmm. um, Alan Alan P Panel. You can uh, look him up on online. In fact, here's his phone number here. But uh, Art Flex Alan Panel. It's an aluminum back panel, but they have a. This is a, a surface, a treated surface. These are very inexpensive. Uh, this this particular panel is a harder panel, and uh, I use different surfaces. They all they all give you different results. Um, but I, I like the smoother surface to work on, uh, rather than the heavier canvas. Is a piece that was in the in the gallery recently. So I won't uh, bore you with a lot of those. Anyway, let's let's uh, get on with the demo here. What what's the size of the panels? Oh, those these are just small little um, nine by twelves that I'm working on. Uh, I've worked on larger pieces. Uh, they take these. The usually I spend. No more than, actually, I'm pretty slow. I, I take about a week uh, to paint out, you know, go back and forth maybe uh, three or four times, uh, three or four sittings 
that I'll build up a painting and I'll, and I'll go through that and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why it, 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 it happens that way. Um, I, I probably do it different than the people that have taught me and the people that taught me would tell you not to do it that way. Uh, many of them like to sit down and, and they're all a prima painters. They want to take a painting from beginning to end and they like the paint to be wet and they don't like to over blend. And, but I, the process that I, I do is just kind of something that I, I figured, Hey, I'm painting for myself. And, and so I just want to enjoy it. And, 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 uh, it's kind of like a golfer out there. I'm just out there having a good time. So anyway, um, that's probably why I haven't gotten any commissions either. So, okay. The, the, um, the main thing is to start with good reference, uh, your own photos, your own family members, uh, people you know, that's, that's your best resources. Getting good, um, you know, I, I shoot with the phone. I, I've got, a, I've got a, 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 a photographer friend and he just, he goes crazy. He was a studio photographer. I said, just, just use your phone. And he said, no, I gotta, I gotta get my lights. I gotta set all this up. He wants to use his flash, you know, all that stuff. I said, no, man, just use your phone. I do it out there in the sun. I just need high contrast. I said, I, I, I can take it from there. But, you know, that's what I want. I want good definition between the lights and the darks, just good structure so I can tell, you know, a light light and dark patterns that's what i'm looking for and and you can do that is if you get out in the sunlight and get a good light source basically you can get get good reference um if you don't you can't you know you don't want to use something that's copyrighted so if you don't have good uh if you don't have your own material then go to uh, copyright free sources like, uh, for instance, this is from um, uh, uh, Creative, uh, oh, what's that website? I put it in, uh, I put it in the, uh, the email that I sent out before this workshop. Creative Commons. Creative Commons, yeah. Yeah, so uh, th there, there are places you can go where you can get resources but always, you know, when you're out and about, ask people, do you see people in restaurants, do you see interesting faces, whatever, you see homeless people, you know, to keep that phone handy. <clears throat> so good reference is where you start. You, what, what I mean by good reference is a good range of values of lights and darks and good definition. You don't want a flat photo. You don't want something where you don't have that range. And and when I when I get reference, I see. You'll notice that these two are pretty much the same. I printed out a couple of different color prints here. One is pretty washed out and one is more full. And I do that for a reason because I want to see, I want to see it in different ways. I want to be able to see, well, what's it like when I drop out all the darks and lights and I just see very high contrast. So using the printer and the computer and those kind of tools and being able to see it in different ways like that. For instance, here you can see Maybe you can see, um, you know, where I've, they're pretty close to the same. Can't really see it with this lighting like this. But. Okay, let's, let's just get going. 
Michael, anyway. how do you transfer, Michael, sorry, how do you transfer your images onto the uh, surface where you're going to paint it? Do you tra uh, trace you it? Want, you want to be able to, really want to be able to draw. Okay. <laughs> There, I, I don't want I don't want to tell you to blow things up and transfer. Okay, that's uh, that's not really a good idea. I do it okay. because because it's just a shortcut. But I learned how to draw. I I you know if I didn't hadn't learned how to draw, then I probably would miss stuff. But there's here's a good book by a guy named uh, Oliver Sin. And if you look at his book, you'll notice in here that this guy really knows how to break down the head in, ter in terms of planes and panels. And, and he understands the, the, the head in terms of those planes. So don't, don't shortchange yourself. Don't but think Michael, that- Michael. Yeah. yeah. You can draw on the news, uh, newsprint paper. Yeah. And then transfer it. It's still your own drawing, right? You can, yeah. You can. What I do is I use this um, that car, carbon carbon. Um, there's a a. Um, oh, I've got some right here. I use this. I use this material here. It's just a graphite paper. You can buy it in the art stores. It comes in rolls. Mm. All it is is a, is a graphite sheet. You can get a Michaels, and uh, it comes in a graph. In it, in it, what it is is a graphite coating. So once it's on your tracing paper, or even on something like this, if you blow it up to size. Take an ink pen, and what I do is, you can see on this, if you look at this really carefully, you can see where there are dotted, kind of dotted lines here. Those dotted lines are not hard lines for a purpose. They're telling me that those are soft edges. Those are, those are not gonna be hard edges. Those are gonna be rounded edges. These hard lines, those are defined edges. So I, that way I don't get lost as I'm painting. So I've got a little bit of a map in mind. And those edges that I've drawn, those, those are strategic. Strategic in the sense that I have broken this down in my mind in terms of two value patterns, a light and a dark. I want, I want to simplify this right from the get-go because the, the first important job that I have in this portrait painting process, because it is complex, the face is complex, face is very complex. You're dealing with all kinds of issues, all kinds of surface changes. Your first, first job is to break this down into a light and dark pattern and to group all your darks. Now that sounds really crazy. The last thing you want to do is just make a big mass out of those darks. But that's the thing that's going to hold this painting together. If you look at, if you look at those portraits that I showed you, they, they, they tend to hold together. And probably, probably what you're not realizing when you're looking at it is those dark shapes are just one big shape. Not so much, you can't see it so much on that particular piece, but let's, This, this one's better, it's a better example. Okay. You can really see it here. See how that, that dark shape just coalesces? 
and holds the whole shape together. Might be too much on this one for you, but. And you can see as I, as I finish this painting here, that's what I'm doing. You can see how I'm beginning to just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold all these dark shapes together. So my first job as I paint this, as I paint this painting is I'm gonna group these dark shapes together. Let's do that. Let me talk about my palette just a second, because it's, let's see. Hey, you should see, show the other uh, camera. Okay, let me, I spotlight, yeah. Okay. So let me pull that up a bit. Yeah. All right, there we go. All right, Th this palette that I have that I have is really simplified. I, you'll notice there's a complete absence of blues and greens. Yeah. I, the reason is is because really in the face, if you start throwing in blues and greens, you you're gonna have some problems. You don't need blues and greens. The blacks, black and the browns and the yellows will make greens. They'll make all the green you need. So, so just eliminate that from your palette by simplifying it. There's a guy named Andrew Zorn. I don't know if you're familiar with him as a painter, but if you look at his work, he was, uh, Pretty famous guy. You look him up, but he had a very limited palette. And the guy, he only used white, uh, he, uh, ochre. Um, he used uh, uh, cadmium red light. Um, cadmium red light. Uh, black. Is that it? <laughs> Yeah, he just, he used like, he only used like a handful of colors, four colors. He did all his paintings with, and he painted all these portraits and everything with just these few colors. And he got greens and, and you'd swear he got blues, but it's your eyes seeing those blues because of the, the related colors around it. Andrew Zorn. Yeah, he was at the De Young. His, his paintings were at the De Young here recently. I couldn't, I tried using his palette. I couldn't do it. It was, it was like, I I do it. so I, I had to, I had to, imp, I had to import some more yellows. I just, I needed a wider range of yellows and reds and browns. So I, I imported some, some lemon yellow, some cad yellow, a couple of more reds. And then what I do is I mix up a range of values, skin tone kind of base, base colors for the skin tones, but I, I do it in terms of value. So you can see I've go, gone from sort of a, a mid-tone to a light. And then I can move from these, from these basic colors into um, the darker colors. So, from here, I can take any of these and move out. And th this is sort of, sort of where I start. And it's really, it seems sort of complex, but remember all of this just relates to the light side. I don't even have to worry about the dark side. The dark side I've already said, I'm gonna reduce to those big dark, a big dark shape. I can always go back into that dark shape later and put a little reflected light and lighten it up here and there. Maybe even throw in, in some, some um, black and a little yellow and make it green or gray and lighten it up. But that's secondary. All I have to do is worry about that light side. So I'm, I'm simplifying my problem step by step. So already I've, I've simplified my problems. So basically, let's, let's begin that, that first step that I told you about. What I wanna do is, let's go back to the other camera, if we could please. Let 
I'm, I'm only going to st uh, spend a few minutes on each stage because I have already broken this down into four steps. Uh, how did you prime your board? The, oh, my board, my palette. How did I what? How did you prime? Did you use a primer for your board? This yellowish color in the background. I, I'm I'm sorry, I still didn't understand the question. So, is this canvas or a board? Uh oh, the the board that I'm working on. Yeah. Th this is actually a. This is actually a canvas. Oh, okay. This adhered to a, a board. Okay, thank you. Uh, where's the other? <laughs> Here we go. Now let's get over. It will be my eyes. All right. So the first thing. I want to do is well, I'm not even gonna, you know what I'm not even going to deal with that I'm just going to I'm just going to show you because I, I pretty much, let me just finish blocking this out. Let's assume that you have seen me draw that and Oh, another thing I want to tell you about is this stuff, oleo gel. I don't know if you've heard of it. O L E O. Oh, oleo gel. It's a, it's kind of a jelly-like medium. I don't know if you can see it on here. It's, it's this material, right? It looks like, I don't know, what, what does it look like? So, so what I'm saying about is just coming in and just basically really getting a nice dark, form wherever your your darks are and pulling those all together so that they're all just one big nice shape and and not worrying about too much about definition other than you know holding it to the shape itself So Michael, does this interfere with the painting when you put color on it, the uh, oil paints, or does it just blend in? You want to, you want to, well, you want to paint thin at this stage. You want to, you want to keep your, your darks pretty lean. See, I'm not putting that on very thick. You can see that I'm using quite a bit of medium. And if you look, you can see my paint mark. You can see that underpainting underneath. So you know that it's fairly lean. All I'm trying to do is get enough down to cover cover the surface. I don't I don't need it to be heavy. See, 
whenever you're working with oil like this, you want to work from lean to thick. Correct. You want to work the other way. Think of oil paint this way. Keep your darks thin. And as you work toward your lights, you want to go thicker and thicker. Darks tend to, what happens with light when it hits your oil paint is it goes down through the darks, hits the surface, comes back through, and it gives this feeling of depth. When light hits the surface of the whites, it immediately reflects back and it gives a sense of presence, of, of being in, in the foreground, which is what you want. So it helps you with that illusion of, of depth perception. Darks, darks recede, lights come forward. It works for you that way. So here we go. This is now you can see where these little half tone areas that, that are kind of thin. That's those are really unnecessary, but for, it's just for me to, to remember my mid-tones when I block those in. So here I've got a nice value statement of, of light, middle tone, darks. And, and you can basically see the face, right? I, I mean, it, it, it basically says face, not a lot of detail, but it's a map. And it gives me something to start building on. That's, this is this is the this is the really the problem solving part of the, of the of the portrait and getting this right, especially if you're working from life and you're not and you're not you're not you're not tracing a a, a portrait a print like this. Working from life and working from you know you know actually getting that right. <laughs> This is really the critical part. So you get all this right, the rest of it goes pretty good. <clears throat> so then we come, th this actually to me, this is the most fun part. Now we're going back to, this is another, this board is another uh, board, actually is a canvas board. You asked me about different surfaces. This is actually a canvas board. So I'm working on different panels here. I just, just happen to have different boards. So forgive me, fire me if you want. Okay. <clears throat> so this is actually the fun part for me. And that is this kind of abstract part where you, you're lit. Um, you know what, Th these darks are really not, let me restate these darks because these darks are kind of falling apart. Sometimes you need to go in and, and actually do redrawing when you're painting. Uh, you start losing your your painting, uh, your uh, definition in the painting. But if it's if it starts becoming a bunch of pieces and not holding together, then One thing about that dark and light pattern is the, the it really holds the painting together. It, it always guarantees, and it doesn't have to be that black. I mean, you can establish a much lighter, uh, darkest dark. You could establish a 40 percent value, or you could establish a, a light color. I mean, it could be a, you know, it's just so whatever you decide is your darkest dark, 
make sure that, that that's all just one nice big shape. For instance, that, that portrait, that really nice portrait, that, that lovely watercolor that that lady did, that, that those paintings that I saw, you know, you wouldn't want something like that to be real heavy and dark, you know, especially watercolor. But it could be a nice big heavy wash, a big wash of like a 60% color of some sort, you know, which would hold it all together. So, this, this is distorted when you see it on the board. It, see how that is distorted when it lays back like that? All right, let's start laying in those mid-tones. I like to use uh, chisel points, flats. You may have your own preferences. Some people like just like the shapes of rounds. I mean, I think I think we all develop our own mark making. Uh, uh, Okay, so let's 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 set our midtones now. Let's find a good midtone color, something like. Now here's where I use this oleo gel. Oleo gel helps you just really make a nice uh, paint that just slides around the surface really well. I like to paint kind of thin. I don't like to paint with a lot of opacity. Not at first. I can always lay that on later. I paint real thin and then build up later. So let's just... Uh, Now, what I'm going to do is, as I paint, I'm going to think in terms of, as I do, as I paint this part, th th this is really, like, like I said, this, to me, this is the most fun part of the painting, not the finishing, not the, the finessing, the blending, the modeling and all that. The, to me, this is this very direct kind of stuff. It's uh, what what I'm doing now is is as I'm thinking in terms of like a patchwork quilt, where I'm I'm really not too concerned about how finessed the surface is. I'm more concerned about getting shapes correctly and getting values correct. So as I'm laying paint on the surface, I'm saying, what value is it? And what shape is it? And I, what I want to do is create about five different values on that surface. So within the light range, I, I need at least three separate values. 
light, middle, and, and middle dark. So I'm, I'm not going to go widest white ever while I'm at this stage. I'll never go to lightest light. I'll say that to the very, very end of the painting. See, I, see, I don't want that yellow. I don't. This is this is where I'm also like concerned about color. Color too, to some degree. You'll notice that I'm following sort of the contour of the surface, also of the of the form. I could do this all day. In fact, I do do this all day. <laughs> Every chance I get. I worked a long time to be able to do this. In many ways, this is far more expressive and, and exciting than that other stuff, <laughs> that other stuff I do. Michael, what's the brand of colors you are using? Is it Pinsel and Newton? Uh, 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 good question. I thanks for asking that. Um, I wanted to recommend this brand. This this uh, this brand right here is called Rublev. Rublev. Um, is a paint that's manufactured by a company down in LA. What's going on here? It's just a little battery. Oh. Let me. Hang on a second, I got a problem. Uh oh. There we go. Wow. Glad I caught that. I knocked, the, I knocked the power out of my. I almost got unplugged there, folks. I this this company down in LA um, called Natural Pigments. You'll want to write that down. Uh, they're they're a really nice little company, uh, small company, but they make uh, can you show it closer? I'll take the screenshot and share it with my group. Natural Pigments is the name of the company, but they make this paint called Rublev, R-U-B-L-E-V. Mm -hmm. And um, this particular paint, this cadmium red light that they make, I, I love it. It's like no red light I've ever used. Uh, similar colors are just, you know, I mean, they're they're not they're all great colors but that, man, that red light that they make is like nothing else 
Um, and they also make the oleo gel that I like. Um, they're the only ones that make that. And if you just ask them for their Zorn palette, they could send you all those colors all together as a kind of a package. They're really nice folks um, to deal with. Um, and they're also affiliated with the people that make those um, really high grade palette uh, panels that I, I work on. I'll tell you, when, when I was uh, uh, young and learning about art, I, I took a correspondence course and I always remember this one lesson, the guy said, you're only as good as the materials you use. And I always thought, yeah, that's some guy trying to sell art products. But I think it's true. You know, I see people trying to use drum bockers and this and that. And, you know, art's hard enough to do without fighting your materials. And uh, I know when I paint on these, I, I know when I paint on these, uh, these panels here, when I paint on these panels, I love the results. I just, I don't know, for some reason, the paint goes on it better. They, they, use, they use a lead white base, which is what the old masters used to use. And uh, you don't want to be eating the panels, but um, why would you want to anyway? Um, yeah, they, they, they deal with the paints that you're not, the, the, the paints that you're not supposed to have anymore. But um, this lead white, apparently this lead white base is just, a, I don't know, it's just something about working on it. it they went back to the, um, to the traditional materials, the more traditional ways of doing things. I know a lot of the, the uh, you know, these, uh, these schools, these, these classical schools that have sprung up all around here now, the, uh, the people that are going back to, uh, you know, the ateliers, you know, the, uh, God bless them, they're, you know, teaching great stuff. Um, but uh, you know, they're all trying to find out about how, how it was done in the 15s and 16, 1700s and how the materials were made. And... Oh yeah, I should show you that, show that the wrong thing. So I, I should spotlight on the other camera now. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to work. So, okay, where were we? 8.30, so we have like a half hour. I'll just, I'll get as far as I can on this. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. I probably don't know, but. What type of brasses do you use? What brand? Uh, the best I can get. I, I can't afford the really, really good ones. There's, a, there's some kind called rosemary brushes that I'd really like to get, but unless, until I learn how to take better care of my brushes, I, I don't want to buy them yet. So I, I get the best I can get. I, uh, uh, I, I buy these Windsor Newtons. I also buy these um, Creative Mark. Um, uh, there's uh, several brands. There's Renaissance, Royal Langnickel, uh, Escotas, you know, whoever, whoever has a good flat brush. Um, 
you know, if I if I'm going to an art store and actually feel them, and and I, I mostly I will buy a um, a uh, you know a synthetic that's uh, a good synthetic uh, sable. Thank you. Michael, could you repeat the name of your uh, the panel you use? I couldn't find it online. Artflex. Yeah, it, let me give you a number here. Sorry to disturb you. Not, not at all. Uh, there's a phone number here. Let's see, Artflex. Artflex or Artiflex? Artiflex, A-R-T-E-F-E-X, F-E-X, not flex, F-E-X, okay. Art e -flex. Oh, okay, like Artifacts, okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, 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 sorry, that's okay. Artifex. I will find it, thank you, don't, don't yeah. have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. I, and they make uh, different kinds of panels and they're not all aluminum back. They're different, different kinds of backings. And they also make canvas uh, panels. There's a whole range of them. And they ship right away. I, I've never had any problems getting their materials. If any, if you, any of you people have problems using oils in your studios, don't worry about it. Um, as long as you use good cross ventilation and uh, you're storing your, you're using uh, Gamasol and you're storing your uh, materials outside of your studios in, in fireproof boxes. And, you know, the oil paint is linseed oil. It's not, it, the, the real, the real culprit, the, the, the stuff that's poisonous in the paint is the material itself. It's the heavy metals, it's the cadmiums, it's stuff that's in watercolor and everything else. It's in, uh, so, you know, I, I was always worried about oils thinking, oh my God, they're so dangerous. You know, I wear, I wear the gloves, you know, I protect myself. I, I take out my rags when I'm done out of my studio. I never keep a man overnight. I, uh, I, I use cross ventilation. Um, you know, oils, or, oils are safe if you handle them safely. And uh, a lot of people are, are afraid of them and won't use them. I'll tell you, I use watercolor for years and years and years. And uh, uh, I, I love oils. Oils you can move around all day long. Oils are so luminous. I get along with oils a lot better than watercolors. <laughs> so you can see this is this is pretty choppy. It's pretty broken up. What I can do when when um, we're a little further along here is I, I'll show you how I sort of bring this together. I'm pretty decisive about my strokes. I'm, I'm not fooling around. I'm, I'm looking at the shape and I'm deciding what it is, what value it is, what, what shape it is, and I'm laying it in, right?
so michael this lighter applications they are the thicker ones thicker pigments i'm sorry say again the light color uh, the lighter applications are thicker paints than the darker ones because it's the lighter colored ones are th than what so you use uh, i mean you keep the paint thick for the lighter colors or yeah i'll i'll build up the light as as i paint because because i'm going over it and over it and over it okay. the lighter colors are going to become thicker and thicker and as i as as i put on each successive layer i'm going to make the paint thicker as well so if you were to watch me as i for instance by the time i get to this stage see what what you by the time i've gotten to this stage see see this is the same same painting oh. but I've taken to another level i've laid on a lot more paint see okay. more of an eggshell like finish but that eggshell is several layers of paint it's been built up thank you but you can actually see still see through the darks see how you can see right through it yeah see through the darks here see through the darks here that's what i was talking about keeping the darks thin and the lights heavy And even this, I would go, I mean, even this is like midway. I mean, I would take, this is, I, I would probably put two or three more sittings at least on, on, on this to, to, to bring it to completion. But this, this was at this stage. Yeah, and this one you can see the strokes in the other one it looks very nice and smooth yeah the i i'm i'm actually going to blend this i'm i'm not going to blend my paints here on my palette i'm going to actually blend them on the surface of the canvas and the way i'm going to do that is is i will show you <laughs> So this is what they don't want you to do. <laughs> okay. so, you say, don't blend your strokes. The good all the Prima painters, they want you to keep working those strokes and bring them together as strokes. The ateliers and the old masters, they didn't paint that way. They paint the way I'm going to show you. And that is, they would come in with their little noodling brushes. And they would go, they would take a dry brush like this, or even a brush like this. And this is where the oleo gel comes in handy. There's a, there's, there's a couple of ways to do this. One is, is get, get a blending brush. This is a bl blending brush. It's made by Princeton. It's called a flat shader. And it, all it is is just a, is a, it's a shading brush. It's, it's kind of stiff. It's not real bristly, but it's not exactly a, I wouldn't call it a, a true sable. So what I do is I just, I just drag it over the surface. I'm not even putting any pressure on that thing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dragging that. And what I normally do, and I don't like to do it on canvas, it's kind of canvas that doesn't work as well on, 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 uh, on panel, it works beautifully, but uh, canvas, is, it's a little coarse, so it doesn't tend to work as well. And so what I do is, is if it starts giving me a bad time, I'll pick up a little more paint and kind of move it. Not much paint, but I'll start 
moving it and try to move it. You see, I'm, I'm beginning to move it, beginning to move my edges, beginning to lose those edges. See? And I can, I can go all the way through this and just, just basically just kind of drag things out. It's sort of, it's just almost like a, uh, a blending stump on a charcoal. But I'm not putting any pressure at all. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dragging that thing across the surface. Now, if I was using a, if I was using a panel, you could really see the effects because panels are so flat. That's when I would use this. Out. I use my best water, watercolor brushes that are shot. They're the best for this. The watercolor brushes, you know, that you can't use anymore. Don't ever throw those away. Those, <laughs> those forty dollar watercolor brushes that you that you spent way too much money on. Here's where you redeem yourself. So, like I always go from the light to the dark. So same thing. I'm just going to I'm just going to use this this kind of light blending. I'm just going to drag This takes some practice. You the best way to learn how to do this is get your just do a sphere or an egg or anything round and just work from light to dark and just, just practice making those transitions really nice and smooth till you get the, get the craft of it. It takes a little practice, but you'll get it. There's not that much to it. You know, try different brushes. Michael, uh, uh, is, is your middle value paint dry by the time you do this? Or no, still paint, I just put this paint on. This is wet paint. I don't. I, I don't. I don't want to work with dry paint. I want to work with wet paint. So both light and middle values and dark values um, are pretty much wet right now. Okay. They're all wet. Yeah. Okay. All those. All the. Well, all the paint in the. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not really working into the dark area too much because I don't want to drag the dark. If I work in the from the light to the dark, I'm just going to really be careful because I'll, I'll just go along that edge. As you can see, I can soften an edge just by going over it and over it and over it. But I'm not going to go back and forth too much. I'm just going to, if I go back and forth, I'm going to smear it. That The light and dark, you got to be really careful. But if I go this way, over it and over it and over it. You can see how I've softened that. See how nicely softened that becomes and how it turns. Now it's no longer a hard edge and it turns like a jaw. Magic. Oil paint. I'm telling you, watercolor, no. Oil paint, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be an airbrush illustrator and I used to be able to get this sort of marvelous realism, you know, and it took forever, right? It was, it was like the most labor intensive illustrative technique anybody had ever invented. And, you know, the results were great and everybody loved it. And, and you know, I, I'd get a lot of work and everything, but Man, that, that was a young man's job. I went blind doing that stuff. And uh, I swore I'd never do it again. And uh, there's a, there was an illustrator that I just marveled at. His name was Brad Broltz. He was German, a German guy. And he did these oil paintings. And he used to do this super realism. And... Uh, 
I just always marvel at his stuff. And he used oil paint, and, and now I know how he did it. <laughs> A few years late, but now I know. <laughs> anyway, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's funny the trails we take. Okay, so let me go back to this one, and let's just we can see how you know this this middle stage is a lot of fun, and if you don't smush it up, you can see how I was just like laying in those patches and having a great time, and I, I <laughs> without having to worry about being delicate and and finishing things out and uh, I could keep doing that. So, but let's move on to, this is sort of the finish stage here. And when I'm in this finish stage where I'm beginning to push things a little further, for instance, let's say, I want a little more value in that cheek, say that cheekbone. I want that cheekbone to go a little darker. So how would I do that without pushing it too far? The first thing I want to do is, they call this oiling up. And that is where you, you want to just put some medium on the surface to work with. So your paint has something to hold on to. So are you putting oleo or gel now or something else? Yeah, I'm just putting, I, I could use, um, I could just use uh, uh, linseed oil do the same thing. Linseed oil, oil gel. Oil gel is just a kind of a thickened uh, linseed uh, 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 material. So you can see where I've, I've, you know, put a sort of a cosmetic uh, layer of, of, so that's oil. I've oiled her, her up there. Now I want to a, a real, real thin glaze. I don't want to, at this point, I don't want to add too much pigment in that darker area. I just, I, I basically, I'm, I'm going to just try to darken things up. So I want to get, mix up something that I can use. This is where a little trial and error, you know, everything's trial and error at this point. Let's see. Let's see what you can get away with. that too far. Now you can see where I've got a light patch here that is a really hard edge where it doesn't break around too evenly. So what I need to do is build up that paint and get a better transition on that cheek. See, see this patch here? I don't know if you can see it. It's a little harsh. Plus I want a lighter light on there anyway. It's, it's just Thank <laughs> you. 
Michael, do you have a website? I don't. Let's so how do we see the rest of your work that you said about uh, illustrating with the airbrush and oh, other stuff? Oh, you know, on, I've got, on... a, I've got, um, uh, got to get that up. I have uh, an Instagram page. Oh, okay. What is your handle? Ro Rogan Michael O. Okay. And I also have a Facebook page, Michael O. Rogan. And I will get a, you know, I was going to build a web page and my own. And I just, just haven't done it. I'm good to know that. You have an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Uh, I have a question, Michael. Are you yeah. using the same brush? Oh, yeah, I am. It's a bad habit, too. No, no, just I'm curious. You're doing it so well with that one brush. You know, I keep, I, I keep wiping it uh, with the... Uh, with the uh, paper towel because oh. it's all, all pretty much the same uh, color. I'm not too <laughs> worried about it, but um, it's a bad habit. I, I really shouldn't. No, you are doing great with that one brush. That's a good technique. You are not wasting color. <laughs> you made it look so smooth so quickly. Uh, having that, um, having that uh, gel underneath allows it to slide. And, and bear in mind that the, this is that that uh, panel that I was telling you about. It's a very very nice surface to work on. Uh, Michael? Yes. So for that al aluminum panel, uh, do you need to prepare it before you start painting? Do you have to ready? prime it? nothing? It's all primed. It's all ready to go. It's... You can buy them unprimed if you want to prime yourself, but I, I like them because they, uh, like I said, they have the, uh, they have the lead white prime. I'm just, I'm just amazed with how the paint is flowing on it. I'm like, it's just creates such a smooth transition. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, Michael, so we are in the last five minutes and then in, at nine, we'll have the artist of the month winners. Um, so how do we close this? Any, anything, any last minute questions and What's the next step here, if you can explain? Well, uh, I'd like to invite you all down to Gallery 24. I don't know if you've been there, uh, down to Los Gatos. Uh, it's always open um, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And there's lots of artists in there. It's uh, fun to come down there and get inspired uh, to see other people's work. Uh, there are other uh, over 50 uh, uh, local artists there um, or, or from around the Bay Area and you just get some ideas and come down there and you know there's places to have coffee and and uh, bring your friends and, uh, and, and and you can see my work there too. Um, um, and always love to have you. There's always an artist there who uh, on duty to talk to. Uh, they're not all as <laughs> friendly as I am, but <laughs> some of them are a lot better than I am. So mm -hmm. there's hope. <laughs> Will you be in your studio on weekends? 
Uh, I'm, I'm usually here. Yes. So, yeah. And if you ever want to call me or ask any questions, please do. I, I, I'm always here. So be glad to help out any way I could. So. Your work is just amazing. Well, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be with you guys this evening. It really was. Michael, I was drawn to your work uh, uh, when I saw it on uh, Facebook, and that's when I approached you. Well, thank you. Your work is amazing. Thank you so much. Well, Thank thanks you. for letting me see your, your work tonight, too. It's, Thank you. Congratulations, all you got in the in the uh, salon. <laughs> Something that I've never been able to accomplish. So <laughs> congratulations to you all. Thank it's you. It's really an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been waiting for Psychic to send me the results. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for him to second. Uh, please send me the names. <laughs> okay. And I'll get started with the. And uh, I will send you some uh, uh, a follow up with materials, the suppliers, and um, uh, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm. I didn't know uh, that you guys normally do that uh, until yesterday. And, and then I was sort of under the gun with some other stuff. And I apologize for not having that. Uh, I will get that out to you, so. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, yeah, and also, uh, uh, Michael, please uh, send us the finished work uh, because we'll attach it to the, the video here. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Michael. I'll stop uh, the stream now.